Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today I am showing you my favorite whiskeys. And yeah, enough rage bait, I'm putting it back down again. So um, yeah, these are my five favorite whiskeys. And I'm starting off with the first whiskey I've really tried uh, neat and without anything and really tried it consciously. And that was the Lagavulin 16 year old. And the Lagavulin 16 year old is the epitome of ham. Yeah, that sounds really strange, but whiskey, ham, yeah. Lagavulin just tastes like a good smoked, sweet, matured ham. And uh, if you've never tried it, try it. It's, it's amazing. And think of a ham and it will just come to you and and will just conquer your senses. It's unbelievable. Um, it's, I think, the, one of the cheapest or the cheapest here on the cask, but it's 16 years of age and it's just wonderful. It's complex, it's mature, it's, it's everything. And it's the standard bottling of Lagavulin and it's widely available. Really, really good. Um, the next one I'd like to mention is the Elijah Craig. Um, some of you have already mentioned that I have a different Tennessee or bourbon, a very old bourbon, uh, not bourbon, Tennessee whiskey uh, as a favorite, but I've actually traded that with a, a friend of mine, the cameraman who was on the uh, America tour. And now I got the 18 year old and that's now my favorite. Um, problem with the Elijah Craig 18 is it's not really available. It's really, really hard to get one of these Elijah Craig 18s. Um, it's hard to get it in any store. It's hard to get it online. Um, they are not highly available. It became a bit better over the last five years, but uh, it's still very, very hard to get one of these Elijah Craig 18 year olds. Um, I think the best thing is to just drive to Bardstown and get one of the bottles at the distillery. Maybe, maybe like that. But otherwise, yeah, keep searching. At some point you will find one. We in Germany do have them on and off, on an on and off basis. Um, then we move from very, oh, the, the, the flavor is very, very intense. Very, a lot addition, additional maturation or ad additive maturation, that's the word. Uh, so you have a lot of influence from the fresh cast that has been allowed to mature the whiskey for 18 years. So you have a lot of vanilla, a lot of caramel, a lot of oak, um, even some darker and spicier flavors coming through, even though it's a, a bourbon and uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very interesting. Um, yeah. Then we have the Octomore. The Octomore is one of the epitome of smokiness, whereas the Lagavulin is a complex, still fairly balanced, high peatiness whiskey. This here is peatiness and smokiness uh, to its limit. There are some bourbon casks, there are some uh, sherry casks. Um, this one here is the uh, 6.1 and I've had a few of them and they do taste differently, but I still regard them, pretty much all of them, as my favorite because um, whether you have the uh, the sherry or the bourbon cask, it doesn't matter that much. It's just the overwhelming smokiness. And you can even play with the smokiness because it's really, really high strength. So you can add a few drops of water, you can add uh, a spoonful of water or even more water and release uh, the flavors of smokiness to its very limit. And that's why I really like that because it's so exciting. After two glasses, I don't think I had more than two glasses ever because you don't really want more than two glasses because your body's already smoked out after two glasses. <laughs> so this is not a, a, a bottle for heavy drinking because it, you couldn't do it because it's just too smoky. Um, the next one is also from Bruchladi. It's a uh, Bruchladi Black Art and this one is the 4.1. It's, 
It's a 23 year old Brich Laddie and it's a, a very, very good old whiskey with a lot of flavors, very, very complex and just well matured and it's just amazing. And I have this bottle at home. It's not that full anymore. I'm not quite sure how the flavor has changed over years, uh, but I have this bottle at home to show people how a well matured and really nice whiskey can be. It's also fairly expensive. So yeah, pretty much all the whiskies except the Lagavulin are expensive. The Lagavulin is yeah premium priced, I would say. Mm, yeah, the last one, Jack Daniels, number 27 gold. Oh, big scandal. A whiskey connoisseur has a Jack Daniels as his favorite whiskey. Yes, it's not the standard around the corner drug, uh, truck stop Jack Daniels, but it's uh, 27 gold. That's a really, really, really sweet, mellow and smooth whiskey. Uh, let me tell you how it was aged. Our double barreled, double mellowed uh, Tennessee whiskey in extra matured in golden hued maple barrels and twice charcoal melt for luxurious hints of maple and exceedingly smooth finish. I think they mentioned something twice. So the uh, double mellowed and the um, twice charcoal mellowed is the same thing. So um, what they do is they filter it through sugar maple charcoal and take out the the aggressive bits in the alcohol and make it yeah, more mellow so mellowed and uh, that's usually done with the normal jack daniels as well that's why it's so smooth but then it is extra matured in golden hued i'm not quite sure why they golden hued golden hued i think these are the hues so why they go i don't know um in maple barrels maple barrels are pretty difficult to assemble and get airtight. But they at Brown Foreman, they managed to do that. And they are really sweet and really just give the whiskey some extra flavors that are just so amazingly nice towards it. So this is the epitome of smooth, mellow, easy drinking sweetness. Uh, it's not overwhelming sweetness. It's intense, but not overwhelming but the mellowness is just to the limit. And that's why I just added here in the, in the my favorites section. So we have intensity in the middle and some very complex deep whiskey on this side and some very smooth mellow on this side. So that's what I do like about the whiskey. It's very complex. You have similar ingredients and you come to very, very, very different conclusions and very, very different products. And you can see the variety there. And that's why I chose these five for my favorite whiskies to have a one from pretty much every corner of uh, taste. Yeah, there's one corner missing um, that will come to my favorite whiskies below $40 uh, dollars or euros. Um, and that's the rye. Uh, stay tuned, uh, keep being subscribed. I will have the whiskey with uh, my favorite whiskeys up to 40 euros um, posted, I don't know, within the next two weeks. So keep being subscribed. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.